Have you got any question about Italy, Italian or the Italian culture? Stay tuned! Hi guys, my name is Mirko and I'm your Italian tutor. If you're new to my videos, remember to subscribe. However, if you're already a subscriber, remember to click the notification bell because every time I make a video, you are going to be notified. And today we are going to do a QA session. So I have collected this question, so thank you very much for emailing me, texting me. So this video I'm going to answer according to my point of view and my personal experience. If you disagree, if you agree, put in the comment section below. So the first question is related if. Do Italian eat pasta every time? Obviously. <laughs> and you can see here. So we love pasta. You can find pasta in different shapes, with different sauce. However, we don't put chicken in meat. We put seafood, meat, but never chicken. So regarding pasta, so maybe in the past we used to eat every time, so at lunch and dinner, but nowadays because people want to experience different diet or some people are gluten free, we try to avoid because we know that pasta is quite heavy. <laughs> so if you try to eat a dish of pasta like Italian size, I mean, I feel bloated now, so I eat pasta maybe twice per week because it's too heavy for my body. But we don't eat pasta every day. Second question. I mean, it's still related to food. <laughs> this is funny. Do Italian eat every time? Absolutely. Like, I don't go to work because I prefer to eat. No. So let's be honest. We love our food and we consider it the best in the world, according to Italians. And, however, uh, we don't eat every day. If we consider uh, our food habits, we are going to have breakfast, lunch and dinner. Like the rest of the world at the end of the day. But we introduce the happy hour, so around 6 o'clock, where you're going for a drink and then there is this massive buffet and you're going to snack around. But we don't go happy hour every day, maybe you go Friday or Saturday. Then we have also the merenda, which is around 4 or 5 p.m., where you go for a coffee and maybe you eat something. Maybe like pastries or different pastries, it depends. Uh, the only thing that I can say that maybe our meal, except breakfast, are richer. So maybe you are going to have a first course, second course, and maybe a side. For lunch and for dinner, yeah. But that is a different story. <laughs> so some people ask me, I would like to move to Italy, but what's the situation like employment wise? So, are you 25? Have you got a degree and five years experience? You get a job! That is the problem of Italy. Age, it's a discriminatory fact. And you're going to see a lot of advertisements where they're going to say, we are looking for, I don't know, shop assistant under 30, or we're looking for this person maximum 25. It's a thing. And in your CV, unfortunately, you need to mention your age. Also, you need to put also your picture. So people actually, indirectly, can discriminate for your physical appearance. And remember when I was there for, I think, for summer, there was um, these job ads in this shop. They were looking for a job assistant, maximum 25, with a degree and five years experience and good appearance. Interesting. This is the only thing that I want to say because it's a video I don't want to swear. Yeah. And then you have also jobs, for example, if you want to work for the post office, uh, town hall or the police, age is discriminatory. So if you pass that age, you are not going to get through. And then you have also to do a kind of, it's called public exam or in Italian concorso to enter. So can you imagine maybe there are five plays and there are like 500 people doing that exam. And another thing that in Italy is, uh, if you ask Italians, they're going to tell you, it's the network. The difference is that in England, for example, you're going to network with people on your professional skills. So I go to these network events and I say, for example, I have just graduated 
and I'm looking for opportunity. So you're going to connect and the, and the network can help you to enter in the job market. In Italy, the network or conoscenza means that you need to know someone to be friend or a relative to enter in that position. This is the difference. What do you think about that? Do you believe in network or not? I don't know, it's something tricky. Next question. Woohoo! Here we are going to hot topic. So the question is about LGBTQ plus rights and what's the situation in Italy. So it's true, we have the Vatican and we have influential Catholic groups. However, Italy has got the civil partnership too. We align with the rest of Europe. Um, however, we don't have adoption, we don't have surrogacy, we don't have specific law against discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity. Why? Because there is one side, for example, leader from the Conservative Party, that are going to tell you that there are going to be individual rights. So there are already laws actually in place to protect you. Is that true? I don't know, to be honest, because it's easy to say, yeah, there are individual rights, um, but they're not specific for that case. Because people actually, they don't want to have like politician or part of the politic, political class doesn't want to have a specific law that they say, you cannot discriminate someone because he's gay or lesbian. Because they don't want to upset maybe the Catholic groups. But if you think about it, and this is when I used to do a paper for university, also UN, in this article against discrimination, doesn't specify that. But sexual orientation and gender identity belongs to others. Why? If you think UN is made up by several countries, some countries has got strong opinion about gay, lesbian and trans. So to avoid this political clash, they left it according to some scholars, to others. Because at least if there are cases of discrimination in that way, we can appeal to others. But we don't specify that, at least we don't create a political crisis. And in Italy it's the same. Actually, if you think civil partnerships ex were introduced, I think, a few years ago, but in the parliament, MPs had the right to use civil partnership for same-sex, let's say, marriage, way before they introduce for the civil society. People that maybe they don't want to give uh, rights or extensive rights because they think, you see, now we give the civil partnership, the next step is going to be the adoption, then the surrogacy, and now we are going to mix up the society, and now a family is going to be made up maybe by two dads or two mothers. No. Italy say a family has got mother and the father. Stop. What do you think about that? What do you think is uh, the natural family? Or we can evolve the society in a different compounds? Next question. Ooh, okay. Are Italian racist? <laughs> this is a very difficult to answer. <laughs> okay, I would say like that. I think it there is a lot of ignorance in Italy and you have two sides. One, the news and the other side, politicians. So about the news, unfortunately, maybe the news is going to say that a Romanian raped a girl or a Nigerian killed a girl in pieces and they're going to emphasize that. So the problem is that all Romanian are going to be bad, all Nigerian a criminal. Is it that true? No. Because then you need to balance the news. Because it's true, maybe you have one case of an Nigerian or a Romanian that committed that. But what about all the rest, like all the Italian families? And there are huge cases in Italy. When I was there, there was cases where the mother killed the son, the, uh, the dad uh, killed uh, the children, there was this case in Puglia where the mother and the two daughters, I think, killed the niece and the father helped them to bury the body. What about here? 
I hear it's okay. Now here, you know what they do in Italy? Talk show. Talk show to talk about it, what happened, the situation, what they think, uh, telenovelas. But then one news about, and maybe an Albanian, ah, okay, all Albanian are criminals. Really, it's ignorance. And then you have the other side, the politicians, like for example, Matteo Salvini, that I wrote a dissertation about him, <laughs> that are going to take advantage of some situations, like for example, the refugees that they came to Italy, going to increase the fact that Italians are poorer, they don't get, they don't have jobs, there is the crisis, but these people are in a hotel getting 35 euro per day. Is, it that tr is that possible? We should protect Italians. Italian first. Obviously, if you are Italian, maybe you lost your job, you don't have money, and you hear this con constant message, what's going to happen? That you become racist. And you're going to think, ah, okay, so I don't have any more a job, I don't know how to provide a house to my family, but this African family gets a house from like the council house. Why? Because they are poorer. And what about me? So this is the reason why you have instances of racism in Italy. But I don't think that Italians per se are racist. But there is a lot of ignorance and we should balance the facts. And we have also to remember that, here I'm really passionate about it, maybe because I'm an immigrant too. In the past, and this is we need to be clear out, there were many jobs that we don't want to do it anymore and the immigrants used to do it, like now Italians do in London. So, okay, one. On the second side, the employers used to take immigrants because they pay less taxes and they have more advantage than to take an Italian because Italian were more expensive. So, at the end of the day, it's a circle. It's not the immigrant's fault if they come to our country to learn the language and to improve their life. So I hope that I, I could have answered to all your questions. So these were like the main topics that we have in Italy now. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you have any question, if you want to comment, if you have, if you disagree with me, put in the section below. Let's argue, <laughs> because Italian likes to argue. Or if you want to know more things about Italian and Italian culture, email me again and we make a second QA session. If you like the video, remember to give me a thumbs up, remember to share the love, subscribe, and see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.